Hello everyone, Tim here again, and in this video we're going to be doing a teardown and power jack repair on an Asus G73S gaming laptop. Now when this laptop was brought into my shop, the customer was complaining about it having no power with the power adapter. Now we've checked the power adapter, it's getting proper voltage. Uh, checking with a piece of plastic here, a spudger, I'm going to kind of notice and take note that the center pin on this laptop is a little bit loose so that's one you know real sign that your power jack is probably the culprit here but we'll of course test voltages as we get closer to the motherboard level so we're going to start off by removing the battery that's always uh, important that you remove any power source before you go tear you into any laptop there are two latches here that hold the battery in place. We'll just slide that right out. Then there are two screws that are holding this back panel on the bottom of the laptop. We'll just remove those two screws. And once we remove the back panel plate, it'll expose the two memory modules we have here. Each module has two gigs of memory in each slot. And there's actually two more slots of memory under the keyboard. We'll get to that in a minute. A few more screws here hold down the hard drive. So we'll just remove those. And then we'll slowly slide the hard drive out of its SATA slot. And we'll set the hard drive aside also. So at this point, there's one screw that holds in the DVD optical drive. We'll just take the screw out and we'll kind of push, push in on the back side of the DVD RW drive and it slides right out. We'll set it aside also. So we'll now flip the laptop over, open it up, and we're going to target the keyboard now. This keyboard does not have any screws that hold it into place, but it does have four tabs that we have to release. Now I use a pick tool to kind of push these tabs in to unlatch them. This keyboard also has sticky tape underneath, which makes it a little bit difficult to pull off. So just be gentle with the keyboard as you remove it. So we're going to pull these, release these tabs here and slowly release corners of the keyboard. And let's I'll give you a little bit of a closer look here at the keyboard to show you the tabs that need to be removed. The tabs are shown right here in red. We need to push those tabs up. There are little latches that you push up to release the keyboard. Once you get all four, and as, as you see I'm using a spudger to kind of hold one end up while I work on the others, there's four of them. So once they're released and you have a little bit of play, you can just pull the keyboard back off, you release the sticky tape, be very gentle because there are two ribbon cables that are attached to the motherboard. So we want to be gentle with that. There's the sticky tape I was talking about. So now we just want to release the, the small ribbon cable first, I would, since it's the most delicate. And then we'll re, we will release the larger one once, once I get this larger ribbon cable released. I'll give you a little bit of a closer look at the bottom of this keyboard. The sticky tape is the is the trick with the keyboard. Um, it's pretty tough tape. Might give you a bit of a hard time, you know, getting it off. But just be as gentle as you can, and uh, it will it will come off. Okay, we're going to flip the laptop back over. We're going to work on the hinge cover now. now the hinge cover is held in place by six screws two of them which are under the battery area. So we will remove those two. And then we have four more that are along the back side of the laptop. Two of those screws are right next to the battery compartment. So we'll remove those two first. And then there's two more closer to the edges where the hinges are of the laptop. Still on the back side, there's one here and then there's one opposite here. 
Once these six screws are removed, the hinge cover pretty much easily comes off. It's not really snapped on. It becomes loose. Pretty easy, uh, pretty easy to take off. Not much force is needed at all. So we'll just remove our hinge cover. That will expose our hinges and some of the wire management. So now we can work on taking the palm rest off. In doing that, we'll just flip the laptop again and we'll just go ahead and remove all the rest of the screws on the bottom of the laptop. And this will release the palm rest. I'll just take a moment here to talk a little bit about this Asus laptop. It's got an i7 2630QM processor, Windows 7 Home Premium, and it's got a GeForce GTX 460M 1.5 gigabyte DDR5 memory. Nice gaming laptop here. So don't forget, there's, there's three screws that are on the bottom side of the motherboard here that also hold down the palm rest. So we'll just remove those as shown. So now we'll be able to flip the laptop back over and target the palm rest. We'll remove these four screws shown here in red to release the palm rest. Now you will have to use a spudger or a plastic thin tool of your choice to kind of unsnap the palm rest, but it's not too difficult. And what I found out now at this point is that the palm rest will not come off unless the screen is removed first. The screen and the hinges of the screen actually kind of keep the palm rest from coming out completely. So a um, little trial and error there. So we'll go ahead and remove and take off the the display, take out the uh, screws that hold the hinges down in place, and then we'll very gently, without pulling out any wires, and there's some tape here that kind of holds it down a little bit. We have to work this tape out right there. Just get our spudger and pry up on the tape. Take note of where the wires, uh, these antenna wires and all are being routed because that's really important. We'll just remove the tape and it'll free up our display a little better here. Key is not to pull or pull these wires or force anything so we'll just kind of lay our display back nice and gently. And now our now our palm rest is easily removed. Just kind of pry on it a little bit. Work with it a touch. It comes right off. And that's going to expose our other two memory modules. So this laptop actually has eight gigs of memory, four memory slots, two on the bottom. And then there's two more as seen here underneath the palm rest. Okay, now we're going to start removing wires and cables. We're working on now the antenna wires that go track uh, through the motherboard, the small hole in the motherboard that goes to the wireless card. We'll pull those back through, again, taking note of how they are routed. Just pull those out there. And then we'll just remove the display cable, pull it off, pull it out of its, uh, its railings here. You'll see a clip here on the left side that holds the video cable into place. We'll just unsnap it and we'll gently set the video cable aside. And at this point, we'll just go ahead and we'll go ahead and target the fans. We'll start off on the right fans. This laptop has two cooling fans. So we'll start off on the right one. There are three screws holding the right fan down, shown here. 
Now the yellow marker, there's a tape that's disguising the or that's covering the third screw. So don't forget to look at that and don't forget to unplug the fan from the motherboard. Once those screws are removed and once the cable is unplugged from the board, the fan just lifts right out. And we get to see just how much this laptop was used. Got dust, dust bunnies in there. We'll clean that out. Okay, that's good. Now we'll move on to the left side, the left fan. And it's held down with three screws shown in red here. So we'll just release those three screws and also pull the power from the fan connector from the motherboard. And once all that is released, we get some tape here on this side that we have to gently peel off. We'll reuse that tape. Kind of just peel it back, work the fan out. And then here we'll get to see just how dirty this fan is. Yeah, dust bunnies. All right, now there are three screws that hold the motherboard under the bottom. And these three screws are shown here in red. So once we take those three screws out, we will then be able to gently lift the motherboard out. But we want to make sure also that we remove all cables that are attached to the motherboard. There are several ribbon cables that we have to detach. And then we'll gently work the motherboard around to kind of pull it out of place. And there we have it. Motherboard out. Going to look for our power jack here. You can see the nice uh, heat sink system the ASUS put on this motherboard. It's, looks pretty nice. Pretty big heat sink there on the video card. I think it's a nice design. But here's our power jack, and that's what we're here to target. We're going to remove this power jack and replace it with a new one. Okay, now I've shown different ways of removing power jacks in my previous videos with my hot air. I'm going to use a different camera angle this time. Just, just so you can have a different point of view. But of course we want to put heat protective tape around all the components that are close to the power jack because we don't want to obviously heat those up, damage them, or desolder any other component. So we'll just protect that with some heat protective tape. I'll also lay down some aluminum foil to protect my bench. And we're going to apply some flux onto the solder joints of the power jack. Now the power jack is still on the board. It's on the top side. You can't see it in this video in this picture angle here but the power jack is still in place I'm just showing you the bottom side because this is where we're going to apply heat and start to activate the flux and you'll see the flux start to activate kind of melt and that's what's going to help us get this solder molten and be able to pull the power jack right off so heat's being applied the flux is being activated and now we can start to see um, we can start to see the solder start to soften up a little bit here you can see the solder start to kind of move we'll just kind of pull it pull it with a pair of pliers pull down with on our power jack nice and easy and work it out Keep applying the heat until the power jack comes right off. So there we have it. Our power jack has been removed. We'll just kind of get a little look at it here. Our old power jack. Nice. Love the hot air rework. Works well. I have the motherboard placed on a mini vise that's been protected with some padding. So I can stand it up. I'll show you. This is my other way of re putting, replacing the power jack. Putting it back into place. We'll just stand it up. I'll add a bit more flux again. 
on the uh, where the feet go, and that'll help molten the solder one more time. Once I have the flux there, we'll go ahead and start applying heat once again, and just kind of gently rest the power jack in its place until the solder softens and molten's. Once we see that the solder is actually giving way, we can apply ever so slight pressure onto the jack to help push it down into its slot, as shown here. Okay, and then we'll just keep applying the heat and we'll just give the power jack a nice little push to be sure it's flush with the board. And see it seats down just nice and flush. Let it cool, take the heat off for just a few seconds. And now we can let go and our power jack is in place. We'll clean up our work. And then from that point, we'll test with a voltmeter to be sure we're not short circuiting anywhere. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add some fresh solder to the feet. And then I'm going to go back with my hot air rework and I'm going to actually remelt everything so I get a nice flow of fresh solder up through the board. I would recommend doing this on any of your power jack jobs if you're using hot air. If you do it, use this method to go back, add fresh solder and then remelt it. That helps draw the solder up towards the jack and it also ensures that there's no cold solder joints. So after we do this, we'll heat that solder up, remelt it, test it again with the voltmeter, and we're good to go. All right, now everything goes back together, everything in reverse, get the motherboard back into place, get all of our cables, wires, and ribbon cables back into place. Making sure everything is taped down nicely where it doesn't come loose. Secure the motherboard back down with screws. Put our fans back in, be sure they're plugged in properly. We can get our display put back on. Now at this point after the display, I would recommend just powering the laptop up to be sure you at least get display with your power adapter and memory, at least one stick of memory so you make sure that the laptop is indeed firing up. And that's gonna pretty much do it for this job. Once everything's back together, you're good to go. Hey, thanks for watching my video everyone. Please rate and subscribe on my YouTube channel. I would appreciate that. I have more computer repair videos on the way. Tim'sComputerFix.net is where you can find me on my website. So until next time, everybody, see you soon.